All right, for Showtime and CBS Sports, I'm Luke Thomas, joined by rising Bellator sensation, who, by the way, returns to the Bellator cage this Friday uh, for their most updated uh, Bellator event, Bellator 259 Cyborg versus Smith 2. It's Valerie Lareda. Valerie, how are you? I'm good. Super happy to be here back in the Mohegan. You know, this is my third and I love it here. And I'm used to it and I know what to expect. You know? uh, I've, I've stayed at the Mohegan. Are you a fan of it? I mean, it's nice, right? It gets the job done, but the quarantine yeah. can be a little long. Yeah, I love it here because everything's in the same place. You know, they have the best restaurants, you know, or we just go downstairs to go across the arena, our hotel, everything's connected. And this was where I debuted it. And I had a first round knockout here. My last fight had a second round knockout here. And then hopefully I repeat history for the third time. Uh, you know, what's interesting, Valerie, is uh, are you, you're now heading into your fourth pro fight. Is yes. everything feeling like it's supposed to? And the reason why I ask that is certainly nothing has gone wrong. Everything's gone right. But I wonder if you're feeling like there's a little bit of pressure promotionally for an expedited timeline. Uh, in other words, there's a, a great amount of popularity already for someone who, as you might agree, three fights into their career, it's a little unusual to have this kind of a, a, a name. Um, you know, I have put this pressure on myself because I'm the type of person that puts herself in the worst positions in order to grow the most. And um, when I decided to go professionally after three amateur fights, you know, I said, I want to do it on a big platform because I know I could handle it. Right. So all this attention and media and stuff that I'm getting now, I prepared for this a long time ago, because I said, okay, if you're going to debut professionally with Bellator, you have to be able to handle what's going to come with it. Cause with everything comes consequences. Right. So for this camp, I've really worked on the most of my mentality and my mental health and, you know, breathing and learning to meditate and just ha be patient and, you know, and just take things calmly because I put a lot of passion and emotion into my fights. So I just, I mean, I learned to calm down a little bit and I'm going into this um, very prepared, very ready. And also like, I, this is my fourth fight with Bellator. I know what to expect it expect already i'm not as um anxious as before i'm kind of calmer and um i'm excited to be in there honestly are are you itching to get on the on the main card or are you okay for now being on the prelims no i like being on the prelims because i finish early i get to eat i get to drink and then i get to go home like honestly i don't care about that i know that um people watch me live on youtube which is super easy to watch you know I, i'm more accessible to the whole world and i prefer to be like that i do this more you know because I love to do it, but I also love people when they watch me to have a good time, you know, and to enjoy what I do. I'm a performer and I'm that's just going to go in there and pin someone against the cage. Like, I will never do that. Even if I have to win a fight like that, I will never do that because at the end of the day, like, I just want to give people a show. And that's what I've been about since I was a baby. And, you know, I'm, and that's how I'm as a fighter. I'm very different, have a different style. I'm entertaining and everything with me has to be dramatic. <laughs> Uh, fair enough. All right, let's talk about Taekwondo here for a little second, uh, yes. your background. As you train, how do you think about training? Do you think about it as skills to acquire to add to Taekwondo? Or do you feel like there are certain things you can do from Taekwondo in MMA and you want to just strip out the inessentials? I guess what I'm trying to wonder is how much of this is to blend two different worlds? How much of this is to replace? That's an amazing question because I constantly ask myself this when I'm training, you know, mm. I'm like, you know, the thing with me is that when I train, there's certain Taekwondo techniques that I don't want to lose. So I make sure that when I spar, I purposely like throw them, even if I miss them, because I know one day it's going to catch someone. Right. The thing with Taekwondo also is that you have to be careful with the timing because all those spin kicks and could get caught your back, you get your back caught, you know, and I don't want to make a mistake like that in a fight. So when I train, I train and I spar to box, to grapple, to defend. Because at the end of the day, my muscle memory is taekwondo. Like I will do a combination and without even thinking about it, I'm, I'm liver kicking someone. Like I didn't even know what I did, you know, like it's just muscle memory from so many years of repetition and I just see it and like my legs up before I even think about it you know so right now I'm working on like just like move my head movement my boxing um taking down my my mixing my combinations to my takedowns my grand and pound 
but also like when I spar, I just throw my taekwondo techniques here and there because you know I know that they're going to catch someone they're very different and I just have to keep that sharp that that reaction sharp that not anyone could have maybe not taekwondo or maybe it is who are the best kickers in MMA like that you enjoy watching oh um uh, the one that just fought Barboza, it's him, right? He just yeah. fought that he trained the yep. American top team. I see myself as a young female version of him. Like when he's training American top team, I've seen him watching me spar and he's always like giving me thumbs up, like, wow. Cause I know that he, he kind of understands our brain, you know? And like his past fight was incredible. I just saw it. And honestly, before I left, I, that was on Saturday. I left Sunday and that was the last thing I saw it. I go, wow, I'm going to take, that fighting mentality into this fight on Friday. Uh, in terms of, for, for folks who may not understand the differences, just very briefly, if you can, we don't need a wide explanation, but a quick one. What would be the difference between, because Barboza comes from a more like Thai boxing style and you have a more Taekwondo style, and mm -hmm. yet you want to emulate some of the things he's doing. What would be some of the differences though? Um, the leg kicks, you know, uh, Muay Thai fighters, they kick with their shins a lot. And as a taekwondo fighter, we kick with our instep. And that's like a kind of controversy in the sport, right? Because a lot of coaches don't let me kick with my instep, but they don't understand like how effective it is. You know, these are used to that Muay Thai uh, shin style. So I think the stance also is more square compared to a taekwondo fighter that's um, completely sideways and diagonal, kind of like um, Thompson, you know? But those are kind of the biggest things, like the low kicks and the stance, like, Either you're facing forward or your hands are down and you're diagonal. Yeah. So you have more of a bladed stance, right? Where you're totally at the side like that versus sort of square. Um, yeah. When you kick I with the instep, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but like we've seen, for example, Chris Weidman and, and Anderson Silva, they've broken their shin. Granted, when that's shin on shin contact, I guess what I'm asking is how vulnerable as a bone is the instep of your foot? Have you ever broken yours? My, my instep has like, 30 fractures like everywhere like it's just over so many years it's it's like like it's made to like uh take damage if that makes sense mm. um i could kick with my instep anywhere like i could kick an elbow and it'll hurt for like 30 seconds but it's so used to it you know the thing is with taekwondo you know um you don't really kick elbows that much because you're kicking a chest protector so one of the biggest uh, things when I started my is I realized, damn, it hurts. You know, they block and it hurts. So you kind of have to like uh, kind of fake up, fake down, and then like, you know, body shot that you, you have to mix it up so that their arms in different places. Or as soon as you see them block the head, then you get them in the liver, you know? Um, but yeah, just the instep, it, it could hurt. And so the shin, the low kicks, I'm not a big fan of it. Number one, because when you're low kicking, you're exposed to an overhand. That's how I knocked out my last girl. Like, if someone tries to low kick me, like, yo, I'm knocking you out. Like, I could read that timing from a mile away, you know? And um, I don't know, I just do things in my fights that I know are effective and are going to work, not anything stupid. Where, where are you on calf kicks? You like them or no? They work. I'm, I, I, like, I like to, like, hit to, like, knock you out to, like, break your rib, you know? Um, yeah. I guess maybe one day I'll have a fight, I'll calf kick and it'll hurt her. I'll be like, oh, this works, you know, but for now I, I like my, my traditional kicks. And what about, just since I have a kicking expert in front of me, what about the controversy inside MMA on oblique kicks? Again, where you're sort of like stomping on the knee, so to speak. John Jones is kind of famous for him. Are you a fan oh, of them or not? Like a cut kick, like a cut kick. Yeah. Like it's super effective. It's like, I love throwing cut kicks. Like in my amateurs, I used to do it all the time. I don't know why as a girl I haven't done that. It's because they're in my face so much. But um, I don't know. Like if you throw it right above the knee, like it just stops them from coming in, you know. Um, I usually throw with my right leg. And it's also a way to keep your distance. And you know how far you are from the person. Because usually once your foot touches, like you're kind of in range for your hands already. Because Or vice versa, like when I strike, um, I will throw like a one, two or two, one. And if I feel like the, my jab just touched slightly the chin, I know that she's backing up and have a perfect roundhouse kick waiting. Hmm. Uh, all right. So let's talk about your opponent, Hannah guy. Do you, are you a tape watcher? If so, what have you seen? Where, where are you in terms of your understanding of who you're facing on Friday night? I don't care how I'm fighting. <laughs> I'm prepared for everything. Like at American top team, I train with, the toughest, hardest, like, 
125ers, UFC flyweight female and males, you know, every style, like, and something I came to the re revelation also for this camp is that for the rest of my career, every single girl in front of me is just going to try to take me down and submit me and rush forward. Right. to. So it's like so annoying. Like, I just honestly, I just can't wait for the day I fight someone who's going to give me an opportunity to have a little distance to jab, like throw a jab, right? They're just going to come running at me. So I just was like, okay, oh, I'm going to learn to fight this way. This fight, like I'm going to stay in the pocket. And I'm just going to knock someone out. I swear to you, like I'm going to throw a flying knee. I'm going to throw a spinning kick. I'm going to throw something. If you try to double leg me, I promise you my knee is going to be in your chin and you will not be able to take me down, submit me, anything. Like my reaction to to the coming forward is just, it's too quick. Like it's too explosive. So then give me a timeline. How long do you think it'll be before you have an opponent who's willing to sort of dance on the feet with you, so to speak? Never. Nobody is ever going to do that to me. No one's ever going to fight with me. No one's ever going to want to take one of my spinning kicks. Like as an amateur, I had so much fun because I was able to be a creative martial artist here. I kind of had to fight like, underhook underhook uh circle to the right and then i pick my shots until she gets tired and then i knock her out that's literally what it is this girl's gonna do the same thing to me i'm prepared for it but this time i'm gonna surprise her man like i'm not i'm finishing this fight in the, in the first round and I'm, I'm going home do you know why this fight was delayed it wasn't delayed long it was a short little pushback do you know what that was about it wasn't delayed it was a mistake like they made a mistake with the announcement date it was so weird because I mean, I was going to fight the first part, April 9th, and um, then my, well, my grandpa got COVID in the hospital, and then all of us got COVID. Then he died of COVID, and then because of protocol, they had to push me back, and it was always 21st on the contract, but they, I think they made a mistake in the announcement or something, and um, it was just a quick fix. It was no problem. Well, I'm sorry to hear about um, your family there. Was the pandemic especially, I mean, the pandemic was diff difficult for a lot of people. I wonder... Um, you must be glad that it seems to be coming to an end. I wonder what the experience the last year or so was like. Um, it's, it's like, you know, you don't really know, you don't really feel something until it happens to you and your family. And I used to see like on the news, like people were saying they can't be with their loved ones that are dying in the hospitals and this and that. I used to be like, I want to see who's going to tell me that I can't see someone in my family who's dying before they're dying, right? Until it happened to me. And um, it was just traumatizing, man. Like, my grandpa, he got COVID in the hospital. And um, it, just because he went in for an ulcer he had in his stomach, he was super strong. And um, for two months, they just let him deteriorate in there. And they didn't let any of our family members be there with him. Like, if a nurse or a doc doctor is able to have a mask and suit it up to go in there, at least one family member should. It, like, gives them life. You know, his granddaughters, my mom, like, a family, something, they would just put the food there. He wasn't eating. He lost like 40 pounds. Of course, the old man's going to die. You know, it's just not right. And um, when I was training at American Top Team, uh, my mom called me. She's like, Daddy, Chucho's really bad. And I ran home like running. And when I got to the hospital, I just, I had, uh, I went to my house and picked up my glove from Tara's fight that had her blood on it. And um, I took it to the hospital and through a little hole, we just had to scream, Chicho, thank you for everything. I love you and I promise you I'm going to make you proud and represent our blood and our legacy. And the nurse put the glove on his chest. And 30 seconds later, after I got there, he waited for me to die. And I couldn't even touch him before he died. And it's just, it's disgusting that this is the world that's come to, that they don't let us, like, um, be there at least a little bit with our family members and our loved ones. And obviously, I feel a certain type of way about it. But what can I do? You know, I moved on. I had to fight. You know, I have all these people criticizing. Oh, you know, you know what I mean? I like get so much pressure, pressure all over. I'm 22. I have a family. I'm trying to like do it all. And at the same time, like things happen. My life, my family story is crazy. Like nothing with us could be normal, you know? Um, but I'm just strong. I'm strong mentally. I'm strong physically. And like things happen. I have a crazy ability to block things out and just perform and keep moving forward. And that's what I've done. And here I am, I'm on weight. I'm ready to fight. I'm dying to get this over with because I've been training for the longest time. And I just, I'm dying to make weight and, and, and God willing, you know, win because I really have put in the work and there's no way that God's not on my side with everything that's happened, the way that I've trained and the, the way I've managed to put things together um, to keep doing this. But yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, well, I appreciate your candor. And I'm, again, I'm terribly sorry to hear about the circumstances. All right, so uh, looking forward, however, let's say we talked in one year from today's time. What will you have hoped to accomplish in your career inside the cage during that time? All right. Um, every fight, you know, I have a, I have a feeling uh, I'm a knockout artist. And I don't mean that in a cocky way. I mean it in a way that um, when I spar or when I do anything, my instinct is to finish always, you know. Um, I think I'm going to be known for that. I really do. And um, I know I have the power to do it. I just feel it inside of me. So in a year from now, I see myself being um, six or seven and on. I think six and all because I'm going to film a movie coming up. Uh, and I wanted, like, I want, I want to fight at the end of this year two more times. I want to fight now and I fight one more time before the end of the year and then the beginning of next year. And I'm filming a role in between and I'm also doing commentating now and stuff. And, you know, fighting's my life and it's everything. I've been doing this since I was two years old, but um, I have so many other passions and dreams that I have to start developing at the same time. And I could do it like I was bred to fight. And this for me is like another competition I don't know how to explain and like I used to compete back to back country to country and it's just I all I need is like a good like 10 weeks uh drop the weight um prepare myself well spar well you know learn evolve and just go in there and just have fun I love what I do all right last question can you tell us a little bit about the movie role uh no I can't but uh, I I um I hired a talent agent that he's the best in the world and he um he works with uh, the top Latin artist and you know I just have so many things that I'm gonna put um my heart and soul into now and there's two things I'm developing like um brands uh like products uh, one of them is like a fight proof makeup line and um it's badass and the other one is um like a, a fit wine company because you know I love wine and I, I can't really do anything something very low calorie sodium free that you know we could also have a good time and and maintain our weight and um on top of that my eyelash company and my own merchandise and um now I'm gonna go into acting too which I've always done acting my dad was an actor in a movie only the strong I don't know if you know that movie mm -hmm. but my dad was one of the main stunt doubles there and he filmed the fight scenes and stuff. So like that all runs in my blood. And, you know, I've learned that I need to balance my life because I'm the type of person that's so passionate about fighting and um, I don't want to burn myself out. I need to like chill and like enjoy other things too and train hard and maintain my weight and, you know, just have fun with it. I'm very young. I'm in the beginning of my career. People think I'm 28, 29 years old. I'm 22 years old. You know, I'm doing everything the right way, the right camp, training the right way, you know, I'm doing everything I need to do to become a champion one day and I'm training with the best in the world. So there's no way I, I, I can't, I won't, there's no plan B. Well, you're certainly a busy uh, young woman and your next step in your journey, Hannah Guy uh, will be on Friday, Bellator 259 on the prelims on YouTube as, as well as a bunch of other places. So uh, can't wait to see it. Valerie, thank you so much for your time and uh, you don't need luck on Friday, but I can't wait to see you fight. Thank you so much. Nice to see you again.